Let's turn in our Bibles to Job chapter 30 this evening. Can you believe this? We are 30 chapters into the book of Job. Long journey. The book's got 42 overall chapters. And uh, yet, just a little at a time, chapter each evening in our meditations and our devotions, we're again chapter 30. In chapter 29, Job took us back to the way things were before the trouble came. How he was an honored man. He held positions down at the city gate at the courthouse. How that he was a benefactor for the widows and the orphans and the poor people. How that he was honored in every imaginable way. But now in chapter 30, we get the before and the after picture. This is Job, the way he's been treated in his grief, in his sorrow, after the trouble has come. Uh, you ever heard of fair weather friends? They'll stand by you if you got the money or the reputation or the prestige. But they'll bail out on you if things ever go contrary, if you ever lose the things that attracted them. That's what Job is experiencing. Do you remember the verse early on in Job, I think it was even in chapter 1, where this great man of God said, The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hear me. Chapter 29, the Lord gave. Chapter 30, the Lord has taken away. And Job is, Job is grieving over his circumstances. Don't jump on to him. Don't rebuke him. What would you be doing if you buried all your children? If you lost your job? If nobody in your family was there to stand with you anymore? And your best friends turned against you? On top of that, listen to Job chapter 30. Now they that are younger than I have me in derision. Job just said the younger generation, they're mocking me and making fun of me. He said, he said the riffraff, the young, uh, the, uh, the no good young even are treating me that way. said, why this crowd is mocking me, why their fathers I would have disdained to have sat with the dogs of my flock. I wouldn't have even hired their daddies to watch my sheep. And now they think they're better than me. They now disrespect me. Beware of any generation, I need an amen, when young folks think they know more than the old folks. When young folks can rebel and mock, belittle the old folks. That's what's going on. And Job is hurting because... Chapter 29, Job felt blessed because of his relationships with people. And in chapter 30, that's the very thing that's breaking down. Relationships with people. Listen to verse, and I know I'm skipping some, but listen to verse 8. I, there are other things in the chapter I want to include tonight. They were children of fools. They were children of base men. They were vile children. Mocking, making fun of Job. Can I just interject something right here? That's about the kind of crowd that's doing the talking in America today. That's about the kind of crowd that's running the country today. That's about the kind of crowd that, uh, uh, that has taken over in our land, the Rifra. Those rejects, those reprobates, I need an amen. They're not my heroes. I'm not going to back them up. They're rebels. And they're on their way to hell if they don't get right with God. Here they are marking, mocking God's man. Listen to verse 9. Can you grieve with Job? Can you have a little compassion for I am now their song. They sing little jingles about me. Making fun of me. I am their byword. Mm. They abhor me. Verse 10. They hate me. 
they spare not to spit in my face. They said they'll go by and spit at me as I sat here on the ash heap outside the city of town. This is the opposite of yesterday's chapter of chapter 29. There, Job is held in honor. Here, everybody spits at him. Everybody, everybody makes fun of him. And Job feels that pain. And he feels it deeply. You know what this reminds me of? Honestly. It reminds me of the Lord Jesus Christ in His life on earth when He was mocked, when He was belittled. They said, uh, you're born of fornication. You don't even know who your daddy is. They said, you're a wine-bibber. You're a drunkard. They said to Him one day, you're a glutton. They accused Him one day of working His miracles and the power of Beelzebub and the power of Satan. While He hung on the cross, they said, you're a fake. You're an imposter. If you were the real Son of God, you'd come down off that thing. Belittling, mocking. And who's mocking? It was the it was the low down trash of Job's day that was mocking him, and that's exactly who it was in Jesus' day. The hypocrites, the scribes, and uh, the Pharisees who who had sold religion for another dollar bill, if you'll allow me uh, that expression. Oh, listen to verse twelve. Job's still lamenting, lamenting. He's grieving. They rise up against me. Young people, all people, uh, the city council, everybody, they rise up against me. They set forward my calamity. They try to make things worse in my suffering. They come upon me as the breaking in of waters. Said it's like a big tidal wave. It's like a tsunami hitting me and bowling me over. Those are exactly the words of Jesus as he hung on the old rugged cross, thy waves, Father, thy billows, thy anger has gone over me. Job in his suffering here, an innocent man's suffering is a picture of my Savior, of my Lord Jesus Christ. This is sad. All my welfare has passed away like a cloud. All the blessings God showered upon me, they're gone like a cloud blown away by the wind on a springtime morning or afternoon. Job in his sorrow. Job in his agony. Job in his pain. It hurts when people turn against you. The words of a talebearer are his wounds. They go down into the innermost part of the belly. It hurts. Words stab. They're doing that to Job, the servant of the Lord. Listen to him in verse 17. My bones are pierced in me. Does that remind you of Jesus on the cross where he was pierced in his hands and in his feet? Listen to verse 18. We don't get this anywhere else in Job. Not not to this degree of specific, uh, uh, this specifically. The great force of my disease is upon me. His sickness is chronic. It may well be terminal. Uh, pus oozing from balls and sores all over his body. And then Job says something. Everybody's turned against him. And Job, as he always does, he lifts his eyes heavenward. He, he, he is anxious to see uh, if, if God would help. If God would... I want to read it. He hath cast me into the mire. Now he's not talking about those young smart alecks. He's not talking about Eliphaz, I think, or Bildad or Zophar, or Elihu coming up. God has cast me into the mire. You say, I don't believe I'd say that, Job. Hush. You've not suffered what Job has suffered. I guarantee you right now, I'm talking to somebody, if they're honest in their heart, you feel like there have been times in your life God has dropped you. God has let loose of you. He hasn't, but you feel like it, like He's dropped you in the mire. I am become like dust and ashes. I'm dried up like dust and ashes. Jesus on the cross, He said, I thirst. 
I thirst. He's Psalm 22. He is as dry as a potsherd, as dry as a piece of clay out baked in the sun. Oh, my heart goes up. Listen to verse 20. I cry unto thee, Lord, I cry unto thee, and thou dost not hear me. I, I, I stand up and you notice me not. Thou regardest me not. Job's praying and praying and praying and God's not answering. He wonders if God's even listening. Oh, listen to me now. I guarantee you there's somebody under the sound of my voice. You've prayed and God did answer. You've begged and God didn't look like come through. Uh, you've beseeched and, and, and heaven's almost like it's zipped up. It's closed tight. It's like brass. You felt like Job did. Oh Lord, I cry unto Thee and Thou hearest me not. And yet, I'm going to need a big amen. Job kept on praying. I've asked and God didn't hear me, but I'm going to ask Him again. I've pled and it seems like God didn't answer, but I'm going to plead some more. I'm going to ask and ask and ask and seek and seek and seek and knock and knock and knock and eventually my God will hear and he, and eventually God did hear and did answer. Verse 21, he gets even stronger. Lord, you've been cruel to me. Oh, Brother Bagwell, I would never say that. How many of preachers say, Lord, you bless that church over yonder. Lord, they're about half liberal and you've blessed that preacher and he's just climbing the social ladder. And Lord, look over here. We're languishing. But Lord, you've about become cruel to me. Thy strong hand, thy strong hand is opposing me. Job felt like God was against him instead of for him. Oh, I love that song and I love that verse. If God be for us, who can be against us? But Job says, I'm afraid God's not for me anymore. He's not blessing anymore. It looks like he's turned his head. I believe God's against me now. But he kept on praying. But he kept on trusting. But he kept on leaning. But he kept on reaching and grasping for the hand of an almighty God. In verse number 20, I'm sorry, it's verse 22. Lord, you're dissolving me. You're dissolving my substance. Lord, you're letting this cancer, you're letting this disease eat me alive. How many Christians have wondered about that? And then maybe verse 23, I know you're going to kill me. I know you're going to bring me to the grave. I know you're going to bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. You're going to send me to the grave, Lord. I understand. And I, this is a terminal thing. That's what Job believed. He believed God was slaying him. And yet he trusted. And yet he believed on. And yet he leaned on. And he reached out one more time for the hand of the old man. That's faith. Hear me. That's capital A. Capital. Uh, that's capital F. Capital A. Capital I. Capital T. Capital. A. That is faith. 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 Trusting when you can't see. Trusting when everything around you has reversed. Trusting when your world is falling apart. Trusting when you can't find a verse to apply. Trusting when it just seems like you're in agony. Trusting when you're, when you're beginning to get feel what you keep on trusting God. Oh my, I appreciate and I admire him. I want to share one more verse with you. Well, more than one, but right at this moment. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. Job said, you know what I feel like? I'm ostracized from the community. I had a thought late last night or early this morning as I studied uh, we know Job is outside the city, probably down at the garbage dump, and uh, he's sitting on a pile of ashes. I always thought he went out there because uh, uh, he, he just wanted to be alone, and Patton and his friends came out there. Someone said he didn't go out there voluntarily. The city kicked him out. They said, we don't know but what you've got's contagious, and we can't, we can't have you in town here. They put him out. He is rejected. He has despised the whole town that once honored him now. 
esteems him not. That is exactly the position our Lord found himself in. In fact, when they crucified Jesus, do you remember it says they crucified him outside the camp. They Calvary was outside the city gates. He was an isolated Savior. And he said, God, why have you forsaken me? He's isolated from the Father. In fact, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He is isolated from the Father. My God, my God, he is isolated from the Holy Ghost. Job said, I, I am a brother to dragons. I'm a come back. I'm way out yonder in the wilderness. Job is a picture of the Lord Jesus. Next time you suffer, next time you're in agony, next time you're rejected, why don't you use that sorrow? Why don't you use that rejection and identify with Jesus? Say, Lord, I, I can't say I know how you feel, but I know a little better. They hated you. They despised you. They mocked you. They made fun of you. Uh, they ostracized you. They, uh, they absolutely... Paul said, I want to know Him and the fellowship of His sufferings. That's what... Don't waste the hard times you're going through. Invest those things. Use those things to draw you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's a new verse. My skin is black upon me, and my bur- my bones are burned with heat. He is so dehydrated, apparently has such an elevated fever, that his skin is drying up and turning black. That, that, that his bones down inside are like they're a blazing fire from within. And I don't want to apply this too far. But you know what Jesus did on the cross? And He got it all done on the cross. That's why He said it is finished. He suffered your hell for you. I'm not going to back up on that. He suffered my hell, my sin debt for me. Yes, did my Savior. Oh my. Uh, uh, no wonder He said, I thirst. No, no, no one. His bones, not a one broken, but His bones in agony uh, and in pain. Uh, uh, and... Uh, Boy, this is life. They used to say, where the rubber meets the road. This is trusting God in shoe leather. The last verse of the chapter. Job laments. Hear that verb. Job laments. My harp is turned into mourning. I used to sing songs of joy and praise. Now my harp, H-A-R-P, is turned into mourning. And my organ, musical instrument, into the voice of them that weep. Oh my! And he's telling the truth. uh, He knows everybody here around him is turned against him. Now it looks like God's turned against him, but he's still going to believe God will answer prayer eventually. That's the God who said, Open wide thy mouth and I will fill it. And Job's been opening wide his mouth the whole book. And my, is God going to fill it? Double fill it at the end of the book of Job. My harp is turned into mourning. Maybe you ought to go join a health and wealth church. Maybe you ought to become part of the prosperity gospel. That won't work over there. He's in agony. He's in pain. By the way, if we don't prepare the Christians of America for suffering and difficulty and hard times, their faith, our faith may crumble as things get worse and worse. And I don't know if you've read the news or not, but things are getting worse and worse in a hurry. America's about to crumble, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my harp is turned into mourning and my organ into the voice of them that weep. Preacher Bagwell, you're surely not going to close. Well, I have to. That's where Job chapter 30 closes, but I am going to say this. God leaves room in His great big heart, I'm going to need an amen, to hear the voice of the mourning, to hear the voice of crying, to hear the voice of weeping. You won't believe who said this. Blessed are they that mourn, hurt, squall, cry, grieve. For one of these days they shall be comforted. Over half of the book of Psalms is written in the form of lamentation. 
O Lord, how long? How long, O Lord? How long will You judge me? How long will Your wrath be upon me forever and, and ever? Yes, God's got room in His heart to hear our agony, to hear our care, to hear our burdens, and to hear our pain. Hey, let me tell you some folks that went through some hard times. Uh, much like Job, maybe not as intense as Job, but my, Jeremiah spent a good bit of time in prison. They threw him in a dungeon once, and the Hebrew says he seeped into the mud up to his armpits, quicksand. He was about a dead prophet till he got rescued by Ebed Melech. And uh, let's think about Isaiah the prophet. History says wicked King Manasseh sawed him half in two, killed him, martyred him. All Christianity is not singing little tunes and going hallelujah. Some of it comes from the trenches of battle and warfare and sorrow and heartache and grief. Think about Paul. The, how many times was Peter in jail? Think about Paul the Apostle. We've got a whole section of New Testament books we call prison epistles. Paul wrote them while he was in jail. We better thank God Paul was in jail. We'd be missing Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, and the book of 2 Timothy on top of that, were it not for the... Oh my, God's turning my harp into sadness and mourning, and my organ, the voice of my organ is into weeping. We better say hallelujah. I'm glad in the Bible there's some sad, weeping, heart rending people who kept loving God and kept worshiping God. Paul's in jail, but he kept preaching. He kept winning souls. And you're going through a hard time, many of you. I know you are. Some of you are inexplicable. Describe the burden that's on you right now. Keep on loving. Keep on testifying. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on leaning on an almighty God in heaven. i got to close. I remember Daniel once was praying for an answer to prayer. Hear me now. And he prayed 21 days before an angel came with the answer. Three weeks praying nonstop. Jeremiah had a similar prayer experience and he prayed 10 days before the answer got to him. Job kept praying more than 10 days, more than 21 days. More than 10 weeks. Probably more than 10 months. But he kept praying. And eventually, I need a great big amen. And eventually, the answer came. Hallelujah. In your sorrow, in your pain, in your heartache. Old Joseph Parker, a British preacher of yesterday, he said, preach to hurting people and you'll never lack for a congregation. Somebody write that down. You preacher boys, write it down. Preach to a hurting congregation. Uh, to preach to a hurting people and you'll never lack for a congregation. Job kept on praying and God blessed him double in the end. Dear hurting heart, wish I could just reach out and hug you and comfort you and remind you that the Holy Ghost is the one who walks with us even through our son. But I will say this, Keep on praying. I don't know your quota. Ten weeks, ten months, ten years. Keep on praying. I need a big amen so I can close. He will not let you down. He will not fail you. He has kept every promise He's ever made thus far and He's not going to start breaking them today. He is the most faithful Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior Job, is sure having a hard time today. Everybody's turned against him and he can't even find God. But though that's true, he didn't quit. Let us not be weary in well-doing, Galatians 6, 9, for we will reap if we faint not. Dear friend, don't faint. Keep trusting. God will meet your need. This is Brother Bagwell. Let's get back together tomorrow evening and look into Job chapter 31.